light bulbs we know generate light. But we also know that light bulbs produce a lot of heat in the process. Sometimes it's nice to be able to visualize how much useful output, how much light, do we get compared to the heat that we lose. One of the ways to represent these transformations is using Sankey diagrams. So Sankey diagrams show or represent energy transformations and in particular they do a really nice job of showing the degraded energy which is the energy we lose to heat it's no longer useful okay so let's take a look at this Sankey diagram for a light bulb, which is simplified, by the way. The values are not quite like this. All right, the light bulb uses up electrical energy. So maybe it's a 50 watt bulb. And if you run it for two seconds, it'll have used up 100 joules of electrical energy from the wall, from the outlet. So 100 joules goes into the bulb, and only 10 makes it out as useful output. That's what this arrow represents. What's this giant arrow going down? It's the amount of loss we have due to heat energy. So this is the degraded energy that cannot be used for anything useful. As you can see, the width of the arrow tells us how much energy we represent. This width is the full amount, 100 joules. Because the output is only 10 joules, this width is exactly one-tenth of this width. Because the output is a tenth, 10 is one-tenth of 100. And likewise, the width here of this arrow, which is equal to this width, represents the remaining 90 joules, so this is nine-tenths of the total because 90 is 9 tenths of the 100 that we start with. This business of comparing the width is really important, because let's say we have this Sankey diagram for an electrical motor lifting up some load. So maybe it's lifting some water from a well or something like that. Okay, so this is the input energy here, and the useful output is always what goes straight ahead. The arrows going down or sometimes up as well, those down and up arrows represent the degraded energy, the amount lost. Efficiency, which we're going to use the Greek letter eta, it's like an N that just keeps going down. This efficiency can be calculated using the output power, how much, we, how much useful power we get out, divided by the input power. And then you can convert that to a percentage by multiplying by 100%. So there's two ways to get, to get the efficiency from this diagram. One is you could take the values given, 36 joules of energy, so we're using energy out over energy in, over the 50 joules that we have to put in. And this gives us a 72% efficiency. But there's a second way to do this calculation. What if they didn't give us this 36 joules or the 50 joules? What if that information was not there? Even without that info, you can still calculate the efficiency because they've given us a grid in the back. Let's take a look. Each of these big squares is one, two, three, four, five little squares. So the input is five, 10, 15 squares, 20. The input is 25 squares. That's what we put in. What's the output that we receive out? It's 5, 10, 15, and then 16, 17. I'll call that 17 and 3 quarters. And if you calculate this, it should give us the exact same efficiency. 
0.71. That's pretty close. So even by estimating the number of blocks, you can discover what the true efficiency is for the system. Let's test our knowledge on something that we already understand. This is a fossil fuel fired power station. You've got the furnace burning the coal. Here's the heat exchanger. Steam is produced. That steam passes down, hits the turbine, spins those turbine blades, and then it comes and condenses. And so there's another cycle. The condenser draws from a lake nearby to cool that steam back into water, and then the water continues through the cycle, generating electricity along the way. Okay, so what do we have here? They're showing us two sources of loss, and they are sequential. So what's the first source of loss in this system? And then what's the second source of loss, which is really huge? Well, the first source of loss is when these combustion fumes escape through the stack, and they carry away some of their heat. We do not extract all the heat. So three right here, this is combustion gases escaping with some of the heat. But what's this giant source of degraded energy? Where are we losing most of the energy in the system? It's the condenser. We have to remove all of that heat, all of that internal energy, from this hot steam in order to cool that gas and make it water again so that it could repeat the cycle. So removing that energy using the cooling water, cooling water carries away more heat, more degraded energy. That's what this arrow is. And what is one? One is the useful electricity that we get out. The useful electrical output. So what if, the, what if the question asked us to identify the energy or power put in when we burn the coal? Where is that in this Sankey diagram? The energy or power that we put in. Oh yeah, the input energy from the coal, that would be this. Input energy from the fuel. Maybe it's coal, maybe it's natural gas, and so forth. 